This is a Shug the Dog production. Before we had political correctness, we had shipbuilding and shipyard shenanigans. Episode 5. Accidents and dyslexic graffiti artists. Smitty receives a telephone call regarding the sale of his house. Hello? Yes, it's still for sale. I've had a few people around, but nobody's put an offer in yet. Yes, two bedrooms and a front and back garden. The now? Well, the wife's not in and it's not very tidy. I've just finished my dinner. Well, if you're in the area, by all means, drop in. Five minutes, you say? OK, see you then. Bye. Smitty opens his door to house viewer Tony. Hello, you'll be Tony. Yes, Tony, and you'll be Mr Smith. Yes, but call me Smitty. Everyone else does. Well, how do you do, Smitty? And thanks for allowing us to come see the house at short notice. As I said, the wife isn't in from work yet, and the place is untidy, but come on in. My wife and her mother... Oh, that's right, you said they were with you. Bring them in. Well, you see, my mother-in-law walks with a Zimmer frame and she can't get through your gate. Is it a big Zimmer frame? Is the gate not wide enough? No, it's just that she's unable to climb over the person who appears to be sleeping there. Sleeping? At my gate? <sighs> oh, hello, folks. I'll just be a minute and we'll clear this. This, you drunken asshole, get up and sleep somewhere else. <laughs> Oh, shit, you... Hey, leave him alone. He's pissed. I might have known he'd be with you. Get him up and move on the pair of you. We've got rights, you know. Your tournament was here before they knocked it down and built these fancy front door houses. Can I help any? No, just dragging this gentleman out of the way. Sorry about that, folks. <sighs> you know, this, this could have happened anywhere. Would you like to go inside now and look at the house? Do you know these men? These men? Uh, not really. Well, it's just that you said you might have known he was with that um, other chap. Ah, yes. Well, uh, I've seen him before, but not around here. The ad for the house said that this was a nice amenity area, suitable for a young family. Yes, that's right, an amenity area, good for a young family. There's loads of kids around here. Look, that other chap appears to be urinating in your garden. Hey, you asshole! what do you think you're doing pissing in my garden? This used to be where my cludgy was, when I lived here in the tenements. I'll give you cludgy, pissing in my front gardens. You're killing the wife's begonias. He appears to be urinating down his trouser leg. Oh, look, he's fallen on his backside. Tony, where are you going? Yes, well, we've decided this isn't the house or area we're looking for. Sorry. But the amenities, it's great for kids. They even run a needle swap clinic in the library on a Tuesday. Ah! Shit. Where do you think you're going? I'm in the mood to boot somebody's ass, and you're getting it. I'm a local man, born and bred, and this was your native soil before they built these houses, and you fancy folk moved in. I'll give you native soil. Here, take this. Ah! Within the boarding house, Louis and Tonald are eating supper and watching telly. Them two Ronnies are the funniest thing on the box, Lou. It'll be a sad day when they hang up their specs. Aye, it's going to be a different world when they're gone, Tonald. That was a rare fish supper. Uh, I'm having an early night, Louis. The man's looking for those seams welded on the port side tomorrow. Aye. I'll finish this fist off and I'll head up to bed myself. I've got a bottle of beer and a crossword puzzle to finish. Hmm. Not tempted to romance her landlady then? I think she's pissed that seat again. I can smell it. Aye, well, if you get tired of the crossword, have a read of this. A woman's magazine? It's got my story in it. I'll see you in the morning. Aye, I'll catch you then. Outside the shipyard, Sonny has been knocked off his bike 
and is surrounded by workers as Wally Weedle and Billy Brune approach. Coming through here, make way. Would you move out the road, less through? What's happened here? Well, he was coming on his bike when Bungar opened the car door and the kid went right over the top, landing hard. I never seen him. You're a tadger, Bungars. Do we get a name, son? Uh, who are you? Are you a doctor? I'm Willie Weedle. I'm your accident claims manager. And I'm Billy Brown, your primary witness. What's your name, son? I think he's passed out. His name's Sonny. He's been working with me on that scissor lift at the East Shed. He's been working at Heights, and they think I was going to throw a sickie today. Right, let's lift him and get him down to his job. There's a claim to be had. Uh, what's the cut? What, you know, willing to help out a fellow work, mate? Right, one percent. Three. Two. And I only need three of you. Don't drop him. Has he not been through enough? Right, Billy. Lecky, Garth. Lift him. Let's get him in before the horn goes off. You grab his shooters, Garth. Grab a leg, Lecky. One, two... Uh. What's going on, Willie? Pogey. I'm glad it's you in the gate. Kids at a cycle accident. We're taking them down to his job for the accident claim. How much am I in for? Two percent. Ten. Two. Eight. Right, Pokey. Two percent. Take it or leave it. Mmm. And don't forget, you win they want to get out with you do wearing the crotchless pants I supply you with. What crotchless pants? Aye, exactly. Right, let's get the boy in. <laughs> Within the yard breakdown hut, Louis reveals to Smitty the contents of the woman's magazine. Morning, Smith. Morning, Lou. In early again. That's the plus side of staying round the corner at Nancy's boarding house. <laughs> well, no more. Spent my last night under that roof. Something happened? You could say that. I never got a wink of sleep last night. Don't tell me you fell for the charms of Madam Nancy. <laughs> nah. It was Big Donald. Eh? You fell for the charms of Big Donald? No. See, myself and Big Donald were watching the box last night finishing off a fish supper when he gave me this woman's magazine. Tell me they wrote his story in it. His story? Aye, like his life story. How, is he some kind of celebrity or something? Superstar welder? Aye, kinda. So anyways, I'm in my bed with this woman's mag and sure enough, amongst knitting patterns and ads for itchy fanny cream, I find his story. What sort of celebrity is he? Hold on. Listen, the story said he met his sweetheart at school. Married her at 17 and divorced five years later. Hitched too young. Aye, but he met and married someone else. Good for him. Tornal's a big gentleman. Nah, nah, wait. He married this other woman and then two years later hacked her to death with an axe. What? Hacked her to death with an axe? Is that how the story ended? No, no. Seems he served his time, then met up and married his first love again. Oh, that's nice. The story had a happy ending. Not really since I had to share the same roof with an axe murderer. I couldn't sleep a wink last night. So you're moving back home then? I don't know if that's any safer. Sonny is carried inside the yard and placed at his job site. Come here, Billy. Right, Billy, I'm totaling this up. Lecky and Garth are in for 2%. Use prime witness. I put in for three. Nice one, Wally. They two are struggling to get them overalls on them. I think my hard cat is stashed there in my corner. I don't think they're his, they're too small. OK, leave that to them. You go get a hammer and start breaking the door on that scissor lift. Sure thing, Wally. All right, Wally, is this the bike crash at the front gate? That's him, Angie. He woke up briefly, but he's been out ever since. I think it's a head injury and maybe a broken arm. Maybe he needs to get to the hospital, but you'll know better than me being the medic. Yeah, the fact that he's unconscious says he's in a bad way. So how much am I in for? Right. For attending the location and falsifying the paperwork, you're in for a usual 5%. Nice one. Do you reckon he fell from that scissor lift? Yeah, we're saying the gate was broken. Here's Billy back with a hammer. The latch, Billy! Break the latch! Right, I'll take care of him and fill in the medical claim form when I get back.
Smitty is cleaning graffiti from his wall as his neighbour, Hookie, appears. Mental tongs rule. Looks like the spray paint and dyslexic kitchen utensil gang are at it again. I know what I'll do with their kitchen utensils if I catch the little shits. Is that for sale sign you have up? Attracts them like flies to a sticky bun. Aye, well, I'm out of this flea pit as soon as I find some Egypt daft enough to buy this place from me. You miss all the action run here when you move. I'll tell you what'll know, miss. What's that? You, you stupid arsehole. Now move out of my way and let me go on with this. You were never part of this community. Well, you'll not be missed. This has been a Shug the Dog production. <laughs> Shipyard Shenanigans was devised by James T. Tiffany. It was written and directed by James T. Tiffany and produced by Shug the Dog Productions. It was recorded at Headhunter Studios Glasgow and edited by Samson Video Productions. The music was obtained from royalty-free sources. The role of Louis was played by Chris J. W. Healy. Smitty by John Hughes. Pokey and Hooky by William Spears. Bung Dars by Brian Brady. Tony and Sonny by Neil McDonald. Billy Brun by Gerard Rogan. Alice by Beverly Sweeney. Granny by Brona Fallon. Tonald by William Sampson. Lecky by Colin McGregor. Wally Weedle by Tony McDonald and Angie by Susan Sims. The narrator was William Sampson.